Hello, hello, welcome. Hi, welcome. We're just going to give everyone a chance to get in and then we'll get started. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> I think we are good. I don't have anyone else okay. in the waiting room. All right, we will. Um, sorry, my view is kind of messed up here. <laughs> I can spare there we go. you. If you like. <laughs> All right, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm really excited to share. Um, hi, really excited to share this new design. Um, it's got a lot of interesting features. And so, um, yeah, I'm excited to share. And I'm Suzanne and Laura is with us here too. We're gonna be your host for tonight. Um, so if you have any questions or anything, please put them in the chat. Laura's gonna help me out watching the chat. And um, then Laura has some exciting gift certificates to give away too. Um, so she'll let us know when we're gonna open up chats and, and, and give those away. <laughs> um, what else am I forgetting, Laura? She'll well, today is our 43rd Tutorial Tuesday. They Ooh. are sponsored by Zen Yarn Garden. And um, we're going to give away two $20 gift cards at intermission, which will be around 720. Um, and I will ask some trivia questions in the chat. And I don't know what numbers I'll take tonight, but I'll come up with it by then. <laughs> um, and I will go ahead and put some links in the chat now. Um, the pattern that we're doing tonight is uh, synchronized swimming, and it is a brand new design by Suzanne, and she's going to walk us through all the techniques you'll need for um, knitting the scarf, and it's with Zen Yarn Gardens Pooling Yarns. So um, I will also share some of that partway through. So I'll turn it back to you to get started. Yay! All right, so this um, this is we we named this. We did reach out on um, on Instagram for help naming with this. So maybe you helped me. Um, but this is the we came up with synchronized swimming. Goes along with the pool theme and also with um, I was kind of like um, you know you're doing a knitting routine. So I'm teaching you a, a little routine to do to help show off these um, pooling yarns. Um, it is, I would say, like multi-directional knitting. So we're going to cast on here with an I-cord cast on. Um, and then we have I-cord uh, edging going up all the way along. Um, and then we're going to turn sideways. And we actually get to knit a sideways um, for a little while, which just with the pooling yarns, it makes the, you know, the colors pool a little bit differently when you change directions. And also with how wide you make the um, each of these strips. So I'll show you what, um, or the pattern has, you know, the width for this scarf. But of course, if you wanted to make a wider scarf, that's super easy to do. And I'll, I'll let you know how to do that. Um, this one does use three skeins, three of the mini skeins, which is about six, well, it is 600 yards. And I just went until I was almost out of yarn. So you could do this with like a 400 yard skein or something different, or if you just wanted to use two of the pooling yarns, it just wouldn't be as long, but I liked it to be really long. So it's, um, comes down here and I have it wrapped twice around. So it is a very long scarf. Um, but I wanted it to be long just for fun. So you can also wear it in a lot of different ways. You can just wrap it around a lot of times to make a cowl, or you can do any of the fancy um, scarf tricks, <laughs> I'll call them. So for those tricks, you would like fold it in half and then you can um, just pull it through once if you want to. But another fun thing to do is pull it through once and then do a little twist and pull it through again. And that gives you just like a little bit more here. Um, also, there's different ways. Let's see, one other fun way was you can um, pull one tail through and then pull the other tail the other way and kind of weave them through individually. And that just gives you a little bit more um, it's hard to do like on the camera too, but <laughs> just gives you like a little bit more around your neck if you're going to wear wear it like underneath a jacket or something like that. So anyway, those were just some of the little fun ways and then we'll get on to knitting. So even if you don't like the scarf, um, I think you might be interested in some of the um, techniques that that go into this one. 
So I'll go ahead and switch over to my camera here and we'll get started. All right. So <clears throat> um, for this one, I used um, a two stitch I cord cast on. And, um, and then I just wanted that to match and I just did a two stitch here, I can show it here. <laughs> um, I wanted it, it to match the two stitch I cord edging that runs all the way up um, along the edge. And let's get started with that. First of all, also I, um, I'm doing this technique. Let me see if my camera's gonna focus. Yep, there it goes. Um, with a lot of times I'll, I've done two core, uh, sorry, I've done I-cord uh, cast-ons before where you did need a circular needle, but for this one, I wanted to do it where you, you don't really need to use a circular needle because the whole skirt is worked flat. So you could use um, just straight needles if you want to. Um, all right, so to start, we make a slip knot and then I just used a locking stitch marker um, and I'm going to use this stitch marker as kind of a holder also. It's gonna hold two of the stitches. So I'll place the um, slip knot on that locking stitch marker and then just hold it with your needle and take your yarn from behind your needle and wrap it around the needle and then around the stitch marker. So I also did this technique um, in that, uh, the dance um, cowl that for the pooling yarns. But in that case, I kept it on, I kept these stitches on um, and joined them in the round. In this case, these stitches are gonna become the edge. Um, all right, so after you've wrapped it twice, just go ahead and lock the stitch marker and it can just hang out there. And then either you can use straight needles for this, like I said, um, and then we just knit into these two um, wraps. So knit the wraps. And I will show this um, holding the yarn in my right hand also throughout here, um, but we'll knit the wraps. And then um, in this pattern, I, I use a terminology called a reverse slip stitch. So a reverse slip stitch is just where you take the stitches that, or however many stitches it says um, from the right needle and put them back on the left needle. So that's kind of what you do when you're making an I cord too. Um, so place them back on the left needle. And then we're gonna take the stitch that's right below. I know it's hard to see with this um, color yarn. I'll try to spread it out a little bit and get it close. So this is the stitch that's on the needle. We're gonna go into the right leg of the stitch that's below. So you can use your, your right needle to pick up that right leg and then place it on to the um, left needle and knit into it. And that counts as like your first cast on stitch. So now, um, well, I'll, I'll go a little bit more and then talk about it, but, and then these, these two stitches, um, you know, travel on to make your I cord on the bottom. So then we knit these two stitches again and place two stitches back on the left needle. And we just keep doing that until we have um, the number of stitches we need for the cast on. So again, we, we'll go into the right leg. We'll pick up the right leg of the stitch that's below and place that on the needle and knit into it. And then knit the two stitches for the I-cord. Okay, I place those back and we'll, we'll go along like that. I'm gonna show you if I hold the yarn in my right hand. <clears throat> what that looks like. Um, so we need to pick up that um, right leg of the stitch that's below, place it on the needle and knit into it. Oops. I dropped those two stitches off, but we can get that back. Let's start over. <laughs> All right, so I had, I had the stitch on, um, on the needle now knit into it without dropping everything. <laughs> and then um, just knit the next two stitches. Okay, I'm gonna do a few more here and then I will show you the first row. 
So slip them back. And then another technique, um, instead of using this, um, instead of using your right needle to dip down, you can use your, um, the left needle. Sometimes I, as you get a little bit farther along, I find that easy. So we're trying to pick up this, this right leg of the stitch. Um, but instead of picking it up with our right needle and putting it on the left, we can just dip down with our left needle and grab that stitch and then knit into it. And then knit two. So let's do a quick um, stitch count here if I can knit. All right. <clears throat> so our stitch count now, um, We've got two stitches that are part of that I cord. So they've been traveling across. So that it, it, I do count these stitches, but just know that the two edge stitches always become the I cord. Um, and then I've casted on um, four stitches here, one, two, three, four. And I still have two stitches that are hanging out on my stitch marker. So those two stitches are gonna get added in after we do our first row. Um, so let's go ahead and do that first row. <clears throat> so after that first row, we just go ahead and turn the work. Um, our edge stitches on the wrong side are always going to be slipped. Um, so it's just slip two stitches with the yarn in front. Uh, and that um, is going to help make our eye cord. And then we'll just purl across. So I'll purl all of the stitches that are actually on the needle for just this first row. Um, and then the stitches that are on the um, marker are the ones that are gonna get slipped. So I do need to make sure to keep my yarn to the front. So I'm gonna keep my yarn to the front when I slip these stitches. And then I'm just gonna pick them up off of the stitch marker. So I kind of pull my stitch marker out to get those stitches to show up a little bit better. Um, and then you can just follow your um, follow the stitch marker with the tip of your needle. So I kind of butt the tip of my needle up against the stitch marker and follow it to get those stitches onto my needle. And then you can just take out the um, take out the stitch marker and we don't need any more. And then you can also pull your tail wherever it is. Um, and just pull out your uh, slip stitch at that point. So then that is, that completes like row one. Um, and then um, I'm gonna, I'll just work a row to show a little bit better what it looks like. But these stitches that were on the stitch marker, they become the I cord on this edge. So I'm gonna knit that stitch. In this stitch, you know, if it looks a little bit twisted, you could like knit into the back of it to make it untwisted. It doesn't matter too much at this point. Um, and then um, let's see, I'll just do one more row. In the pattern, you'll actually start working um, on, you'll, you'll do an increase and a, and a decrease to make this section. Um, so this, this section, turn it around so it looks like the way that we're working on it, <laughs> um, is biased. So you're going to be increasing on one side and decreasing on the other side. So on this next row, I'll show you how to do that increase. Um, the decrease is just, so slip two and then just purl across. Um, the decrease is just a knit two together and the increase is, um, I like it because it's a kind of invisible increase that just looks like the stitches are flowing out. Um, the, also, the nice thing is you have this tail. So if you're, <clears throat> if this stitch is, you know, really elongated, you can just pull the tail and then weave your ends in and it, it, it cleans things up there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, so here's the increase for, um, that we're gonna be using in the, in the bias section. So it's always just a knit two for those, um, those that I cord edging. And then we're going to knit another one and then do the increase. So for this increase, we're going to take the left leg of the stitch that's actually two below um, the stitch that's on your right needle. So we take the stitch that's on the right needle here and we're gonna go, this is the first stitch below it. And we're gonna go into the second stitch below 
and pick up the, um, the left leg of that stitch and then knit into that stitch. So without twisting it or anything. So now I have to kind of go into the back loop of what I picked up. Um, and that's how we work the, the increases here all the way up the edge. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I'm gonna show that one more time. Um, it really makes it easy um, to just, you can kind of stick your needle in the middle of that stitch and then kind of up and, and it comes into that. It's really quite easy to pick up that stitch once you've tried it a few times because, um, because of the way this increase works. <laughs> um, so then we'll just knit across. And then when you have uh, just four stitches left, you're going to knit two together and then knit the two stitches for the I cord. And that is the, <clears throat> that are, that's all the techniques you'll need for this beginning part. So I cord cast on, <clears throat> kind of dark here, but um, I cord edging and then doing that uh, kind of a lifted increase um, on this side and decrease on this side. All right. And next we're going to do um, the, we're going to have to cast on stitches here. So we'll be casting on an extra set of stitches and then working on those stitches all the way across this um, stripe. Um, so we, we work together the stitches that are left here and we add stitches up here um, as we go. And we just work sideways back and forth on that. Um, but maybe I'll take a little pause here and um, see if there's any questions or, or anything before we dive into the, the real meat of that. <laughs> no questions so far. Okay. Okay, we can, I think we, should we pause and do, maybe let's pause and do one winner and then we'll do another section and pause and do another one. Does that work? Okay, that's fine. All right. Sure. Okay. Right. Go ahead and open your chat windows. And my question is, I'm going to take the fifth person to answer correctly. And mm -hmm. the question is, what kind of cast on are we using? Ooh. They got it. <laughs> they did. Let me go back to the beginning. One, two, three, four, five. Anne Patton, you're our winner. Go ahead and mm -hmm. message Zen Yarn Garden. She's here um, in the chat with us and send her um, your email address and she will uh, get you your prize. Yay. So the other okay. thing that I wanted to show you just for a moment, I will share my screen um, just for two seconds. Um, so you can um, purchase a kit if you'd like to make this um, make the synchronized swimming scarf. These are the jump in the pool sets. I will tell you um, that this is what we have in stock now. We are dyeing more and um, refilling as we go, although sometimes we may not re-dye colorways. So if you see something you like, make sure you snap it up. Um, these skeins come in sets of three, which is 600 yards, so that's perfect for the scarf. Um, it is also perfect for various other um, patterns that we have done in the last few weeks. Um, yep. It works for Shayna Billow's crosshatch wrap, and it also works for the dance cowl, um, which is also Suzanne's, um, our focus on pooling yarns. So we've got a few um, new colorways here. Uh, the latte yeah, is calling to me because it, like, it looks like hot cocoa with sprinkles. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have um, the dance cowl kit here. If uh, I didn't see, um, but there probably will be a, this This will be linked soon for the synchronized swimming scarf. And so it will be a kit. So if you purchase, you'll get the pattern, I believe. Um, yeah. But that is just what I wanted to show you. So uh, let me stop sharing my screen so we can go back right. and we'll move back to um, Suzanne. Okay. Um, on the increase, do you knit through the back loop? Yeah, so it, it does work out kind of that you're, you're knitting through the back loop um, and depending on how you pick it up, I guess. But um, let me show that one more time too. That's a good one. And it, um, it does, you just don't wanna twist it. So if you pick it up from the front, then you, you let's see, let me show it. Let me get my camera up here. All right. Um, 
so again, it's this knit two, and then we knit this knit the one stitch. And then, um, so I usually bring my needle from behind to grab, and then it, it, that grabs the, um, the left leg of the stitch. And then, yeah, you are, you just knit through the back loop um, so that you don't uh, twist the yarn. Let's see, but if you, I lost that stitch. So, so if you do, um, and it's this, it, you know, it's the same if you're holding your yarn in the other hand, it might look a little bit different, but it's still just grabbing that leg of the stitch. If you, I think it's too hard to grab it from the front, really. <laughs> so you really would be coming from behind and and grabbing that stitch. You could probably, you know, dip into it from with your right needle. You could grab it that way and put it on. Um, but you'd still be knitting through the back loop. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, so you do knit through the back loop. All right, so I'm going to switch swatches now. I have another little swatch already ready to go that's a little farther along. <laughs> um, so I'm going to switch to that one. And that, now we'll, we're going to be, so I've this swatch, I've just worked a little farther. Um, and now I'll, we'll switch and do the stripe. So there's a couple different steps here. So first we're gonna kind of continue this I cord up the edge while we cast on more stitches to go this way. Um, oh, I see in the chat too, we have uh, the advantage of an increase over a make one left. You could do a make one left. I just chose this one because for me it's faster and it's easier to remember um, and you know, I, yeah, that's why I chose it, but you could certainly switch it to any increase you wanted and it really wouldn't um, make a difference. You could do a, like a, just a um, backward loop cast on or, or yeah, well, it is kind of a casting on, but a make one backward loop. You could do, um, yeah, any increase that you're really comfortable with. Um, not the knit one front and back. You could if you want to, but you would see it would be visible. So this one is pretty invisible. And if you can see there, that's why I chose it. It's it's pretty invisible. Um, but yeah, a make one left would certainly work well too. Um, yeah. So, all right. So, but for this um, stripe that we're going to work, we're going to cast on um, stitches with an I cord cast on, but it's a little bit different because um, because we of how we want to. So I'll show you that. And then when we work the stripe, we're going to be working back and forth, um, and then we'll join with the stitches that are already here until we get to this I cord. Then we'll do I cord bind off, and then our other stitches we're also going to be picking up. Um, so let's just jump right into that and stop me if you have questions. All right, so for this I cord cast on, it, it's a little bit different. Um, we are gonna continue the I cord. So always just knit two for that I cord. And now we're gonna start picking up, um, we're gonna start creating stitches. So for the first stitch, I'm just gonna knit into this bar that's below, but unlike a make one left or right, I'm not gonna worry about twisting it. So I could just kind of dip my needle in and grab it and, and that works, that counts. Or if you're more comfortable, you can dip your left needle um, from the front or the back. If you take it from the back, then you would knit into the back. Um, and if you take it from the front, then you would knit into the front. And it looks like a big hole. It looks like a big hole there, but because of the things that we're gonna be doing next, it's, it's not gonna show up as a hole. So, I don't worry about uh, doing, you know, crossing it either way. So I, I pick that stitch up and then place it back onto the left needle. And that counts as our first cast on stitch. Um, all right. And so then just to make my life a little bit easier, um, I'm going to do a yarn over on top of the um, left needle. So I just come from behind and go over that needle and back between my needles and, and back to the back of my work. And I'm gonna show this uh, holding my yarn in the other hand too. Um, and that kind of just is picking up the stitch for me. Um, so I don't have to do it next. Then I slip the two stitches back for the I cord. Oops, let's see here, I split the yarn there, but slip the two stitches back 
and then knit those two stitches. Okay, knit those two stitches. And then that little yarn over that I gave myself, I'm gonna knit into that. And that really is just so I don't have to go pick up a yarn um, to make that stitch. So that counts as my second stitch cast on. So now I have two additional stitches cast on and we'll do a few more here. Sorry, let's switch hands and do that. I will also um, say that um, if you purchase the pattern and you're working on this, Suzanne has uh, these videos. She she has recorded videos of each of these steps yes, um, that are definitely. on her YouTube channel linked through the pattern. So if you purchase the pattern, you'll get access to those videos. And this mm -hmm. video will also be on the Zen Yarn Garden YouTube channel um, either later tonight or tomorrow. So as you're working through the pattern, you can review it if you need it. But Suzanne yeah. always records excellent videos. So if this looks like it's going fast and you're like, I'll never remember this when I go to knit the pattern, that's okay. They'll still be there for you. Yep. And the, those videos are a little bit more polished. They're not, you know, I, I recorded them, so they're not live. Um, all right, so now we need another, <clears throat> excuse me, another like yarn over on the left needle. So if you're holding the yarn in your right needle, you can just take your left needle and dip under, dip under the yarn um, and then to the back and then slip those stitches back. And I'm also gonna show you what happens if you forget to do that. <laughs> um, all right, so then we knit two stitches. Goodness. All right. Knit the two stitches and then knit into that yarn or that, that we gave yourself. You can see how here I pulled a little bit tighter. And so my it, it the my yarn over is kind of pulling the stitch forward. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Just um, knit into that um, that first strand that you see that you come to. So knit that one and take that strand off and then those stitches can kind of get pulled back and they're fine. Um, and then place that stitch back onto the left needle. So I'll show you if you forget to do that little yarn over, it's it's not the end of the world. You'll just, if then you can knit two stitches and then you'd have to kind of go find that, um, that yarn, sorry, I'm off the screen here. Um, find that thread that you should have remembered to, to, to pull up and put it on the needle and then knit. All right, how many do we have here? Let's do, so that's, I have four casted on and I still have my two stitch I cord. Let's do one more. Um, so I'll do, Slip those stitches back, knit two, knit this one, and place that stitch back. And now I don't need to do another one, so I don't need to do a yarn over, but I am going to place these two knit stitches back. Um, and now I've got um, an I cord cast on that's kind of <laughs> running up the scarf. And I have these two stitches, which are going to turn and they're going to be worked across here. And I will show you that now. So switching back to my preferred hand um, and I'll, I'll switch back again, but um, we're going to, now we're going to start working back and forth. So we still knit these two stitches, but that's the last time we're going to knit these two stitches in this strip. And I'll show you what I mean. So now we're going to work I, these five stitches. Um, we're going to work four stitches and then we're going to knit this stitch together with the next stitch. So knit four or just one less than however many you cast it on and then knit this stitch together with this by going through the back loop. So it's a knit two together through the back loop. Oops. Knit two together through the back loop. All right, now I want to work a row back across these stitches. Um, but I also want to join one more stitch so that there's um, one stitch joined per row that we're working. So because I want it to look nice on the front side, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to slip this stitch back and I'm going to knit two together again, kind of on this front side of my work. Um, okay, so that counts as like 
the first stitch on the, the return row. Um, so now at this point, you could turn your work and just purl four stitches. But you know me, I like to keep things interesting. So I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to work in the opposite direction. And I'm going to show you how to do that now because um, I'm assuming that, that you could, you know, figure out you could turn and purl back just four stitches and then you would turn your work again and end up where we're going to end up. Um, but if you want to try working backwards, it's I love working backwards when it's um, just the, a few stitches. So I still do turn my work even I turn my work if I have like the entire, you know, this entire width to do pearl wise, um, I would turn my work. But if I'm only working this many stitches, I find it a lot faster to work backwards. Um, and it's really good for your brain. <laughs> so, um, so to work backwards, if the yarn is in your left hand, you're actually going to become a thrower. So you're going to have to throw the yarn around. Um, and then I'll show you if you are a right-handed, then it will, it will change that too. Um, and we also right, have so another video on how to knit backwards on the um, YouTube tutorial Tuesdays. We covered that in depth in another tutorial. Yes, yes. So that would be a good refresher too. Yep. Um, all right. So now we're going to be building up stitches on our left needle. So we'll take the left needle tip and go into what feels like the back of the stitch um, on our right needle. And then I have to throw my yarn at this point, throw it around and then bring that yarn through the stitch and let the stitch come off. All right. So I'm going to do that again through the back of the loop throw my yarn around and bring it through and let the stitch come off. Okay, I've got two more stitches here. So through, throw my yarn around, bring it through and off. And one more around, bring it through. All right, so now I've done that. I've done those um, four purl stitches. So if you if you wanted to and you turned and you just purled those stitches, then at this point you would turn back around and have the right side of your work facing you. <clears throat> but now, like we got rid of two stitches down here by knitting those two together through the back loop, um, we need to add two stitches up here. So we're gonna kind of like the the increase that we did, except this time we're going to work through the right leg, actually more like we did on the cast on. Um, but first we're going to go, so you can see that my yarn is actually coming out of this first stitch below. So I can't really like go into that and grab another yarn. It wouldn't do anything because I've already got that there. Um, but what we're going to do is go into the one that's two below first. So we're going to take that right leg um, and place it on the needle and then knit into that right leg. So now we have like one extra stitch cast on. And then we're going to, now we can go into this um, stitch that's just one below um, because our yarn is going through a, a different path now. <laughs> um, so I can take that stitch and place it on the left needle and knit into that stitch. All right. So now I have. Um, two stitches up here and I subtracted two stitches down here. So we're back to even kind of. <laughs> so we always want to kind of keep things even. All right, so now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to show you holding the yarn in your left in your if you hold the yarn in your right hand. Um, <clears throat> you have to forgive me. I'm, this isn't my normal way, so I'm a little more awkward with it, but um, all right, so now we do that same like knit four stitches. In the pattern, it's actually, um, I, it's a little wider, it's a six stitches, but in this one, I just wanted to save us a little time. Okay, so that's knitting four. And then we're gonna knit this one together with this one through the back loop. So knit two together through the back loop. And then again, oh, place that stitch back over here and knit two together through the back loop. Okay, so now, and then we can, we already knit this one so we can place it back on the left needle too. Okay, and now you could turn and purl or you can work backwards. Now, the interesting thing is that if you are normally a thrower, 
holding the yarn in your right hand, you're going to become a picker when you work backwards. So that's kind of fun. Um, so we'll go into the stitch from the, um, like into the back of the stitch, just like we did before uh, with the left needle tip, but then we just can dip under, grab the yarn and pull it through the stitch. Okay, so go into that back stitch, can dip under, grab the yarn and pull it through. And the way I'm showing you is um, to keep your stitches oriented the normal way. Um, a lot of people will wrap the yarn a different way, but then they'll have to like knit through the back loop or they'll adjust. Um, I don't know. Do you do that, Laura? Because Laura always knits knits this way because she's left-handed, <laughs> right? Um, well, my my stitches are actually oriented the opposite way on my needle okay. when I'm knitting when I'm knitting the way I normally knit. So, normally you, yeah. you orient them, yeah. So that's that's okay to do too. It's just that then you have to remember to. Yeah, you just you, what you don't want to do is um, twist your stitches. So right. whatever way they're oriented, you want to make sure that you're going into the front so that um, your your stitches are remaining flat. So you're not ending up with them twisted. That's really the only thing you can do wrong mm -hmm. as far as this process goes. <laughs> yep. All right. So I've got let's see, I did three. So I need two more. So I go into that back of the stitch. I dip down and grab it and pull it back through the stitch and let the stitch come off. Again, if you remember all of the, like how you learned to knit, um, the, that's kind of helpful <laughs> to, to make your brain do. But um, so wrap it, dip down, grab it and pull it through. All right, so now we've worked all five of the stripe stitches. And now we need to pick up um, pick up the two more stitches. So let's do that. I, I also find it easy to take my left needle and and grab that left leg of the stitch. Right. So there. let's see. Can you see it? So that's one stitch. There's the second stitch below. So I'm going to take my left needle and grab that leg, and then knit into it. Okay, and then again, I can just dip into and grab the leg of that stitch with the left one and then knit into it. All right, and so that is that is the basics of how we um, do that stripe. Stri strip, stripe, I don't know, whatever I'm calling it. <laughs> um, so it, do we have any questions or let's all, I'm gonna work two more um back and forth rows um and then i'll show the the this bind off that we're going to do um but let's see i'm going to work those and let let any questions come up or you can just watch um if that is helpful too so two three. so basically what you're doing is you're working your knitting sort of 90 degrees perpendicular to where you are before um, mm -hmm. and working back and forth on that little strip that's creating that sideways stripe. And at the same time, the stitches that you're adding back in at the top um, are gonna be the basis for your next row back and forth when you switch directions again. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, all right, I just finished that row. Um, I know and... it's a little complicated at the beginning, but you're also going to be repeating this process quite a few times during your yes. scarf. So yes. you will get used to both. Uh, you will get used to all of these techniques. Yes. As far we'll as the use to... of color from what I see, you just follow the yarn as opposed to altering the pattern to go with the yarn color changes in the dance cowl. Yes. Um, yes. The fact that there are short repeats in this yarn means that you get to see lots of color changes in a skinny scarf. Um, and the fact that you're doing it over um, a larger amount of stitches, so the scarf width is 42 stitches, um, and the short sections are only six stitches, so you end up with varying lengths of stripes as well. But yes, you're, you're not letting the yarn, in this one, you're not letting the yarn dictate um, what you're doing. You're, you're following the pattern. Yep. You're telling it what to do. You're, you're deciding the routine here. That's why it's like synchronized knitting, <laughs> synchronized swimming instead of, instead of dancing, I would say. It's more of a routine. <laughs> um, all right, so I am ready to show the bind off too. Um, and well, let's see, I still need to pick up my two stitches. I can tell that because there's like a big gap along here. So I'll go ahead and 
dip down and grab that one, knit it, and grab that next one. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I have the number of stitches that I cast on. So in this case, it's five. Plus I have these two, um, two stitches that are the I-cord edge. So at this point, I'm going to do just one knit. I'm going to knit across the four stitches. And now is where the change comes. So instead of knitting these two together through the back loop, I'm going to do a regular knit two together. And that's because I want the I cord to look like it's continuing up the side. Um, and I knit, did that knit two together down here through the back loop because I wanted that um, to come forward, that chain to kind of come forward for the strip. But in this case, we're gonna do just a regular knit two together. Sorry, it's not focusing. Focus, there we go. Knit two together and then just knit one. And now we're going to um, do a reverse slip stitch where we take three stitches, one, uh, two, three stitches back with us to the left needle, and then again, knit two together, and knit one. So that's making our I cord. So now I've really bound off two stitches. All right, so then we do it again, two stitches bound off, um, knit two together, knit one, that's three stitches. And do it again. Knit two together. Knit one. That's four. So I should have one more to do. Knit two together. And knit one. All right. And that gets us back to um, working flat. So we've we kind of were working flat here on the bias. And now we have the same amount of stitches we should have. And I think in this sample, I had 12. So I still have 12 stitches, that's good. <laughs> um, and so you should always have however many you decide. If you decide to make it wider, then you should still have 12 stitches. So you should cast on an even number um, if you decide to do more stitches or less, but probably more. Um, all right, and then when I'll just do one more row back here to show what it looks like if I have enough yarn, I already cut this tail. <laughs> um, so it, the, now you're just back into the on the wrong side of your knitting where the edge stitches are just a slipped slip to with the yarn in front and then you purl across. Oh, I'm gonna run out of yarn. <laughs> Let's see here. Maybe I'll make it. Oh, I think I'm gonna make it. Uh, yes, there is an I cord on both sides, Patricia asked. Yes. Um, and yes, the I cord is at the bottom and then it's on both sides. And then at the top, you'll use an I cord bind off. So you'll actually finish with one as well. Yep, so that's what, um, yeah. So it's, it's, I, it's like all surrounded by I cord. Um, all right, so I slipped those last two stitches for my I card also. So now let's take a little look at this. If you'll remember at the beginning of casting on, it did kind of look like we had a hole there, but look, it's gone. <laughs> so we don't need to, just to reassure you that there's not like still a hole left. Um, and we have this I cord that is continued um, through this little cast on section. And then now it can just go up on this side. And same on this side, we have an I cord um, <clears throat> that flows into another I cord bind off and then it will continue up the side. All right, so, and then we get to do I cord cast off. Um, so let's see here, do we have, do we still have one more? We did all the gift certificates, right? We did not. Oh, we did not, we still have one more? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, so open your chats. Oops, I think we both hit my ad spotlight. Um, okay, so open your chats and I am going to take the seventh person who tells me what the name of the project that we're working on is. Oh. 
Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, I'm having problems because it keeps moving. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven. Elaine Froneberger. You can go ahead and message Zen yeah. Yarn Garden and she will get you your $20 gift card. <laughs> so now we're going to do the I-Cord bind off. And if you have any other questions, um, go ahead and put them in the chat because we're getting close to our yes, time and I will time. make sure that it's okay. We can go a couple minutes over, um, <laughs> but we're getting close to our time. So if you have any other questions, be sure to put them in chat so we can answer them before we finish tonight. All right. So I have another little swatch here prepared where I just worked a little bit further up um, so that we could get into this I-cord bind off. But this I-cord bind off is probably the easiest part of <laughs> the pattern. So we don't need to worry too much about it. So and in, in this the I-cord, so we we just finished a wrong side row and we're ready to start the I-cord bind off. Um, and this is all in the pattern too. It has you knit two first just by themselves. So we just do a knit two and place those stitches back. And that get, just gives the I cord a little extra row um, to turn that corner. So now we start kind of the real I cord bind off, which is knit one, whoops, knit one, and knit two together through the back loop. And then do this reverse slip stitch where you put the two stitches back and I'll switch hands. So knit one. And knit two together through the back loop. Sorry, now I'm getting off here. All right, and place those stitches back. And then we just do that all the way across until you have um, just these, just two stitches left here and two stitches here on your I-cord. So a total of four stitches. When you see only four stitches left, that's when we're gonna stop. So knit two together through the back loop, place them back, knit one, knit two together through the back loop. And just all right, so that's it. So now I have two stitches here and two stitches here. And now, because of the way um, I do the I cord um, edges, all we need to do is bring this needle tip kind of forward and these two tips together. And then we can Kitchener these four stitches together. Um, so I've already cut my yarn tail. It doesn't need to be that long because we only have four stitches. <laughs> um, let's see. So let me get a darning needle here. And all right. So we have other videos too that show you how to do. Um, I, uh, Kitchener stitch more formally. It's a little hard to show you with just two stitches because there's not really all that much to do. And I, I cheat a little bit on this. I don't even really do my setup um, stitches. So I just kind of go right into doing the Kitchener stitch. Um, so my yarn is coming from, let's call this my back needle. So now I'm gonna go to the front needle. Um, and I'm going to just knit this stitch off and purl and leave it on. And notice how I kind of do two steps without um, letting go of my darning needle. And I pull the yarn after I've done both of those steps. Um, so then I move to the back needle and I go purl wise and take it off and knit wise and leave it on. And then we're down to just the last ones. So I'll knit this one and take it off. And this one I'll come purl wise and on or off. And then I'll pull my yarn. And normally your Kitchener stitch will kind of leave a row of knitting. So you can see, this is my tail. I'm gonna pull it a little tighter so you can see it move. 
So that like kind of forms a knit stitch. It looks like a knit stitch there. If, if that makes your corner look good, then, then leave it. If, if it looks a little too bulky or something, you can just kind of pull it out. Um, and that isn't like technically <laughs> correct Kitchener stitch, but it works in this case. It makes it just flow nicely. Um, and then you just weave in your ends, making it look nice. You could even do a little extra, like go into this one and back through this stitch to make it look like a little, to make it look like a stitch. Um, and, and then just hide your tails, weave them in, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I know that is like a lot to absorb in such a short um, session, but hopefully it gives you just a good idea of what is involved and encourages you to tackle the <laughs> tackle that this challenge. Um, but any other questions before we're before we're done here? Or did I miss anything we in did, the chat? We did have a question about any Zen yarn garden yarn with short to medium lengths of color would work. It would. And um, this was written to be used with the jump in the pool yarns, which are three skeins. Mm -hmm. So it's a total of 600 yards. Um, to be honest, you could also make this work with any of the one of a kind colorways or variegated colorways, because yep. since you're, they won't have quite the same striping in the pattern, but um, because you're working in two different directions, the pattern will look different um, as you do yeah. the different sections. So yep. it wouldn't be quite as striking, but you, if you had a stain of fingering weight, you could certainly make it work. And the um, scarf as written is incredibly long. So even yes. with 400 yards, it would would probably be long enough not to wrap it multiple times but still long enough yeah you could still if you you know if you had like a normal length scarf then instead of like for this one I put it on my neck like this and then I wrapped it you know I wrapped this one once and then I wrapped this one again um so if you want to be if you don't do that what you can do is um you can put the scarf on like backwards halfway and then just wrap it once so then it's just just once here um and then you wouldn't have to make it quite so long because it's really really long <laughs> so a question on where do we go to find this video and the previous video in the dance class all of our tutorial tuesday videos are on our youtube channel i added that in chat this one will probably go up either later this evening or it might go up sometime tomorrow i believe you will also get an email from zen yarn garden tomorrow um, yes, that will have linked good. the video to the tutorial and also where to shop. Um, our next tutorial Tuesday is going to be next week and yes, we are going to right cover away. blocking tips. So Suzanne and I are going to pull together our best blocking tips so that now that you've finished all these gorgeous projects that we've showed you, we'll talk about what kind of blocking is best for different types of garments and different tools you can use if you have a bunch of tools at home, if you want to invest in some tools, if you want to just use things you have at home, like dinner plates. Um, <laughs> we have all kinds of suggestions and I put the sign up link in the um, chat window. So I and bring your think. questions too. So we're happy to, you know, just field the questions. <laughs> um, but we've got a few of our like tips and the way we do things and where we cut corners and where we don't and that kind of a thing. So um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Suzanne, for showing us a new pattern and all those techniques. Yeah, you. you worked hard tonight. <laughs> this is my, you know, pet project. I love figuring out things like this. So thank you for indulging me. <laughs> And we hope you have a lovely week and we'll see you next week. Hey, thank you. Good night. Good night.